So yeah, in this video, I'm just going to be talking over it and explaining some of the principles and um, techniques I use when um, creating the picture. So basically, as I'm lining things in, in the face, I'm using just a single liner. It's a really thin 0.5, I believe. And I'm just going over everything in the face, thin lines. The objective here that I'm trying to achieve is to have everything contained using the thinner lines and on the outer lines, say around the outside of an object, I use a thicker line to contain everything within the image. And when it comes to doing thicker lines <coughs> around the image, I don't use a bigger marker. So I wouldn't jump from the 0.5 to let's say a 2.0, which a lot of people do when they line their work. And the reason for this is, if you look carefully, when I do lines that come into the image, they come to a specific point. point. And the sharper, smaller your actual marker pen is, it's almost like a needle. So you can drag it and come to a little clean end and it makes sure that when you have a final image, everything is super duper clean and not blown out. If you are gonna use a bigger marker, when you come to the end of a line, you have no choice but to pull your pen off, it just stops flat. And to avoid that is to by using what I just said then, use thinner markers, and line to a point so each point line up this is also good if you're a tattoo artist as well i don't line stuff with what they call a round i use small needles and i drag to the point and now once you have the two point meeting i double line so i have two adjacent lines running next to each other that slowly get big as i'm pulling out and then i'm using my marker to fill it in just coloring in the gap between that gives the illusion of a thick line next to thin line which makes it look way more detailed and has way more dimension than if it was all lined with just a single line throughout. And once you're happy with the line work, I let the image sit for 10 minutes just because I'm going to be using Copic markers for this. And to do so, it's a wet marker, so I don't want to start making the line work um, be pulled around when wet touches wet. So to avoid that, let the line work um, dry. And I always plan my colours before I start this image. So here I'm just doing the pink in, in the eyes. And what I'm doing is I'm laying down the lightest pink first. I'm actually picking three different tones of pink and purple. I'm lining the whole thing. And then I'm putting down the lighter tone, putting a darker tone and using the lighter tone to then drag that darker tone. So you have a slow and gradual gradient of the pink. For the face, is the exact same principle with the eyes. Lay down a base tone first. I've picked my colours before I'm doing so, so I have my peachy colour, a darker brown, darker than that, so I know that once I lay it down, it's just a lathering process and I make it super simple for myself to do this. So all the areas you want to just add that colour, I recommend just blocking that in. And plus you, that gives you time to sit back and look at your image and see where you want to adjust your tones. Once the base is down, you got to let it dry again. Do not try and pick the tones over straight away. The reason being is you will blow out the ink from the second colour. So here I'm just laying over with a darker tone in the areas I want to pitch shade work in. Then I'm grabbing my light tone and I'm pulling that darker tone around, up, down, left or right, wherever I want it to start fading into the very base tone we first laid down when starting this image. Another little trick here is that when it comes to ears, fingers or the nose, I go over with a light pink. So the pink we used for the for the eyes, that fleshy tone, I just layer it over certain areas of the image and I use the lighter tone for the skin we put down to pull that around. And this I'll add here and there. If you have a light source, say if you had someone holding something like a lamp or a candle, you can do all the skin tones first and later on, use the let's say it had like a yeah let's say it had a blue light from the candle you can go over your image with a blue and pull it with the lightest tone that way you've got some sort of light source and it adds especially with the copper markers a super cool effect play around with that i would draw some example images um, and just see you get some massive results and from here the process is just a kind of rinse and repeat throughout i am i am also using um things like gray tones I like a grey tone in little areas I want to put the real dark tones opposed to using a dark skin tone. A 
cool another tip just to remember or to remind yourself is to work on each color section as you're moving forward this will just save you the problem of trying to adjust tones later on because normally like now you can see there's a lot of skin tones you can see where you want to put other colors like blues or reds last thing you want to do is start adding way too much color to your imagery imagery because you start ending up with something that just looks like a rainbow and you really start losing more of what you want to convey so if you are starting out or a simple tip with color work is just pick three colors and play on that scale of color by hue and contrast so like this one we just talked about this one for example it's got the the light browns and pinks okay for the skin tone that now means as i'm working on things like the bar of soap i'm looking to, for, to use the color pink because it's in harmony with the rest i'm also going to use a pink or like a red you see how i'm saying that the hues changed for the octopus so that's going to all be close linked in the same color palette if i was now to have like a purple octopus a pink soap blue phone green green marker then orange makeup it's going to be way too much too way too much going on and you lose harmony you lose complete harmony with what you were trying to create in the beginning and can turn a really good image which you've lined and drawn up perfectly to look something that just is completely lost and that's the last thing you really want when when you have something that could end up looking so cool Here I'm not trying to do anything fancy, I'm using a lot of the grey tones just to put the smaller details in around the teeth and I'm also just applying some small grey dots for freckles just to give it more, more going on because sometimes you can have empty spaces and I always like to sort of fill it up with something without going OTT with the whole thing. And here's what you're seeing what I was saying earlier I'm using the same pink for the eyes I'm throwing that down um, because it's a color harmony I'm not looking to do anything like too far away like a lot of people just said when you do it blue or gray but then I'm always thinking about the colors and how I'm just trying to keep there's a harmony a complete harmony uh, throughout and less is more I know that's a thing a lot of artists will say is less is more but a lot of times I was like what exactly do you mean when less is more like less effort less what so here is basically the colors have your colors pre-selected with a rough idea of how you're going to enter in don't be afraid to change obviously as you're working because sometimes that can happen but really you want to just make it as simple as you can for yourself and here for the soap I only have three colors I have a light pink a dark pink and a gray that's it and once that's down, as you're seeing now, I have a uh, Prisma colors, polychrome colors, black and white. This I'm using just to add a few more depths of detail. And I will do that throughout the image at the end. I will go over the whole thing with Prisma color black, Prisma color white. And I'm going to use that to touch up areas like the face and the hands or really put in an extra layer of depth that wasn't there before and also the scratchy effect you get with a pencil the scratchy lines I really like that in certain areas of my image compared compared to the smoothness and the smoothness is definitely what you're going to get if you start using Faber Castells compared to let's say pencils and other materials once you know the process of just having your colors or having like normally you want three or four of like the grays as you see here it's just building up light is first move on to darkness because you sometimes you realize you don't have to go as dark as you wanted so by some but just having it there is, is really good and it makes the drawing desk when you're working so much easier instead of having all these colors around and then you're wasting time trying to figure out where did the blue go where did this go so i i have a space next to my table where i keep all the colors i want to use um and all the colors I'm going to use in the back that way it's just so much easier when it comes to drawing it and I'm going to end up doing a thousand things at once now here with the process we spoke about the octopus was done the exact same way the 100% exact same way I had the light pink I laid it down first and I had a darker pink I laid that down then I moved on to darker tones from there 
Also, with the greys, I like to just use that as like more of like a transparent spray paint. I use it just to touch in certain areas where things will have a drop shadow on or just to darken up certain areas. So even though I have the colours, I like to have the grey tones as well just for a little extra bit here and there and it gives the whole thing a fresh new look or dynamic dynamicness to it. And here's what I always do the final. A lot of people like to do the background first but I just like to put it in at the end in case I decide for a colour change. Because if the background colour is wrong at this stage, the whole thing is ruined. It's When I first started, um, this is a big problem I had. A good rule of thumb is usually keep the tone quite neutral and not so bright in your face. Here is this light purple which could easily, easily get away as a grey. And for the background, I'm just going to do a simple square for this. It's one tone. Sometimes I'll do two tones or three tones or have a background. But there's so much going on in this image. As you can see, the octopus with the hairspray soap, marker pens, everything, I rarely want to keep the background simple. If you have too much going on, even though it looks chaotic, and it is chaotic, you're gonna overwhelm people and things get hard to see what is even going on and it just looks like a big jumbled mess. The, this piece here right now I would say is bordering on that, where it's close to being too much. If I was to add, you know I mean, like a background now with like a mirror and everything, it would just be too chaotic and I've just pushed the boundaries. And the same goes, you can do a, sometimes it works better if you do simple characters, you end up doing a really simplistic character, but you could have sort of elements around it that are so chaotic. The simplicity of that character stands out more in contrast to the chaotic background. That's something if you do character design or in a different, a different area completely. So yeah, that's just something to keep in mind that you don't always have to go absolutely crazy with what you're doing. And now I'm looking to finish and close off the piece. I just end up touching a few detail pieces in with the greys. And now this is where the Prisma colours really come in. The black and white. I go over the whole image. I step back. I normally make myself a cup of tea and I take a break. And I'm coming back and I'm looking at all the areas I can just darken up a tiny bit or lighten up the other bits. This gives the image a high level of contrast and the human eye is distinctly, is distinctively drawn to things that are more contrasted. Um, as opposed to just being bright. So contrast, try and pick it up where you can. Sometimes it's good to leave some things mid contrast and then have darker areas because that way you have the whole scale of light, lightest to darkest and use that as a comparison point to make things super dark or super light. And this is basically all the thought processes I take when it comes to creating any of my imagery. So I really appreciate you guys coming along. I hope you learned a few tricks and tips. Here I'm really just trying to show you more the mindset as, as opposed to all the techniques. But I feel like it's a bit of a bit of both mixed in there. Um, if you do attempt doing something like this, please let me know. I'd love to see. Um, there'll be a lot more things coming up in the future. And as always, I uh, appreciate you, appreciate you loads. And um, take care, guys.